Under the Radar. One-stop shop for electronic dance music at MSC Denver. I'm your host, Jeremy. Hi everybody, welcome to episode 26 of Under the Radar. Uh, We have a really special episode for you. We have No Taker on the show. Um, We we sat down for an interview the other day and uh, this is the result of that. I also wanted to let you all know that we're going to be starting up a special giveaway for some tickets for an upcoming show in the next few days. So um, keep your eyes peeled on our social media accounts on Twitter and Facebook to uh, find out all the details about that. Uh, Without further ado, let's get into the episode. This is Too Smooth by No Taker, featuring Grey Matter. Tell me a little bit about yourself and um, uh, how you got started as No Taker. Yeah, sure. Um, so uh, my kind of, my musical, I guess, electronic journey kind of started, uh, you know, when I used to skateboard a bunch. Um, I used to watch like skate videos and whatnot, and as a way, I kind of got like introduced to a lot of new music and stuff. So um, through that, I kind of started listening to you know some electronic music that I didn't really know was electronic music at the time. I was just like, you know, these are some cool beats, you know, stuff, guys like Amon Tobin and RJD2 and stuff like that. That's kind of how it happened for me. And then ever since, you know, my fascination just kind of took over and I've just been doing it ever since.
wouldn't say it drew me to my sound that I currently have. I'd say it just introduced me. It, it built my fascination on just the electronic genre in general, you know, because I had never experienced, like, the, like, rave culture before. What really got me into, say, my sound was more so just, like, a, a journey through different different genres and finding new interests and whatnot and experimenting is, is what really what it was. You know, that's uh, that's when I started writing so- songs like uh, like Infinite and uh, Shimmer and some of my some of my earlier kind of mid tempo melodic stuff. Um, so for new listeners, can you briefly explain the concept behind your Vessel series? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so the Vessel is a device that I use um, to tell stories in a way that I otherwise wouldn't kind of have the ability to. I use it to touch on concepts like sci-fi concepts that really intrigue me and use it to also uh, you know, build worlds and stories around. What part of the story does uh, Pathfinder touch upon? So the story that I decided to put together was um, I had I had a lot of this, my, my EP was sounding, you know, very kind of light, very happy, you know, felt, and I felt like I wanted to touch on, you know, exploring kind of a different, a different place in, in the universe, like a different natural place. Uh, so I kind of thought up the story where the vessel comes and visits this this forest life planet and we get to kind of experience each you know different places in this in this world through through music and, and artwork and all kinds of other stuff you know come closer I meet you 
Listening to the No Taker interview episode of Under the Radar. dreams was meant to be like the intro song for the ep um it's it's more so like a nod back to uh one of my bigger influences which would be m83 the vocals on that song are actually my wife uh saying saying something i uh i asked her to say over over the microphone
What about Into the Light? Uh, Into the Light, when I when I first made it, it was the first song on the EP that I wrote, and uh, it was kind of the thing that started all of the creative momentum for this EP. Oh, it was it was great work with Kara. She's she's an excellent artist, and she's always you know down to to work on stuff. It's it's great when you have like a a good mutual kind of uh, respect for for one another. I feel like she's she's always open to, you know, talk new ideas and
and then you follow that up with uh, Melophonic, and uh, I, I found it. I found it a real, really interesting song. Uh, can you tell yeah, me a little bit about that? Yeah, sure. I think for that one, I, you know, I I had this like happy kind of melody, and uh, I I really was kind of thinking more uh, on the nostalgia part of you know the uh, things that make me happy, you know, and uh, uh, one of the things that came to mind was like kind of like video game. Mm. To me, that song is is very video game sounding with kind of the chip tune uh, chip tune element I put in there, uh, and that's that was kind of the the, the whole thing behind it was just just happy, happy video game memory. <laughs> <laughs> And then what what about each other? Each other was a song I had written um, and kind of had on the back burner for a little while. And then uh, and one of my managers had connected with uh, this guy named Eric Lumiere, who 
that ended up doing the vocals on each other. Um, he had heard my Saving Light uh, remix that I did for Gareth Emery, and after he heard that, he, just, he reached out and was just like, hey, I'd, I'd really like to work with this guy. And so for a long period of time, me and him went back and forth on this production I had and kept working on it and polishing it and turning it into different versions and stuff. And we really, we really collaborated you know quite intensively on it and it turned i think it turned out really well and i think that the, the title is even kind of fitting to you know like the process behind it because we each other each other we worked on it you know yeah <laughs> when it's coming at you like monsters in the night and you feel the danger that makes you want to hide when the cards are stacked against you and you're standing on the edge you Now's the time, now's the time Think about all the dreams you keep inside Think about all the ones you love I know this beating heart will be my guide I know that we can overcome When the world's so cold and we lose it Hope I need than your heart when the weight is getting heavy and the future is unsteady close your eyes close your eyes think about all the dreams you keep inside think about all the ones you love i know And then uh, finally, we have the longest night. This is kind of like a nod back to my some of my earlier inspirations. When I, but for the feeling for this track, uh, I, I really, um, really imbued this uh, this one kind of uh, this radio segment I heard while I was just kind of sitting in my car one day. Uh, it was about this uh, this group of merchant sailors that got stuck in the Arctic. It was a part of the year where like the sun wouldn't come out for like weeks at a time and stuff like that. And I just thought about you know what it would be like to be in that situation where you're stuck in this place of complete darkness for weeks and weeks and weeks, and then all of a sudden you get to see the you get to see like the beautiful warm sunrise and what that would feel like.
that's kind of the thought I had and the idea I put behind that song. Wow. Uh, that's that's really interesting. Um, so on on this EP, you've, you worked with uh, two two uh, vocalists, and then on uh, like Erebus One, you worked with um, Black Gummy and um, Eminence, and then on your on Genesis, you worked with uh, Kara again and and Declan James. Uh, who are who are some people that you would you would like to collaborate with in the future? Um. You know, I, I can't really, I'm not really sure. Collaboration's, like, kind of tough, you know? It's like, sometimes you'd think you'd re- you'd work really well with someone, but at the same time, you guys might have, like, these intense, like, creative differences where it doesn't work out or, you know, different philosophy on how, how music should work and, and whatnot. Yeah. So I can't, I couldn't really say what I think would, like, work too well. I know the people I have worked with, um, like Declan and uh, you know Dylan and Kaz from em- uh, Eminence and Iman Black Gummy, like those guys, you know, are really great musicians. And you know, I I just would want to work with someone who you know would would put the amount of effort and you know write write music at the same you know level that I would be able to, and we could have this you know really awesome collaborative experience so in reality it it doesn't matter who it is if you know if you can if you can work with me that'd be awesome
do you have any uh, future plans uh, to follow up with this release? So, right now, I don't want to divulge too much, but at the moment, I'm working on kind of my next, my next, next body of work. Mm. And uh, in between there, I have a few songs that I think are going to work out maybe for singles, or maybe we might release them in a different kind of format. Um, we're working on something in the in the virtual reality kind of sector that I feel like is is really groundbreaking and is going to be something really cool for people to experience and a new way to a new way for me to like tell stories and in music and stuff. Um, that's kind of that's kind of what I'm working on at the moment, and uh, hopefully, you know, the rollout on that will happen sometime later later on this year.
another another thing on the on the SoundCloud link that uh, was sent to me, I saw that there was an uh, an extended mix of Into the Light and an Into the Light VIP. Uh, are those going to be included on the on the EP when it gets released? I believe so. I think the extended mixes and the VIP, well, the VIP for sure is, but I'm I'm thinking the extended mixes. One last, I have one last question for you. Um, well, it's a, it's a, it's a two-part question. Uh, what are your thoughts on modern music consumption and the the treatment slash payment of artists by streaming services? Um, I think my thought on the 
the modern consumption of music uh, kind of also has like a two part answer, and then I'll get to the uh, the payment the payment question here in a little bit. Okay. Uh, I think I think uh, you know the way the way we're moving in the world is that you know the like music gets consumed a lot faster these days and a lot a lot more quickly than it would say back when you had to go to the record store and buy a CD or you had to buy a vinyl you know and and you could put it on and you'd listen to it over and over again and you'd really grow that appreciation for for what you bought and what you're listening to you know mm-hmm. um I think that's getting a little bit lost in in the modern age, you know, where new music comes out every single day and it's right there at your fingertips. And you don't really have to put too much investment in to, to start listening to it. Um, but I think, I think it's a good tool for people, you know, who still do appreciate that kind of music to be able to explore and find the new stuff that they get to listen to.
say on the on the payment side of uh, the payment side of things, I I really don't know too much about that. You know, is uh, should should they be paying more? I don't know. <laughs> it's, I guess it's up to their their business model. Yeah, I I could say I could say yeah or no. I I really don't know. I'm, I'd say I'm not educated enough on this on the topic to be to really give a good opinion on it. <laughs> That's fair enough. <laughs> All right. Um, well, is there any uh, any last things that you want to say to the to the people that are going to be listening? Um, check out my EP Pathfinder. Um, it comes out April eighth, and uh, I hope you guys like it. All right. Uh, thanks so much for sitting down with me and and uh, going over your new your new EP. I'm sure people are going to love it. Oh, thank you so much. Likewise, I really appreciate you uh, and time to interview me. כביש מספר 6 לדרום עמוס